Okay, I think we can, we can begin. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Chai Hofilenia. I am the head of the Hunger Project of Rappler. The Hunger Project is actually a partnership of Rappler with the Department of Social Welfare and Development and World Food Program. Um, we organize this forum, bringing together NGOs, um, people from government, um, the executive and the legislative, so that we could build a community of people working towards uh, um, the elimination or at least the alleviation of hunger. So as I explained earlier, we will be having very brief presentations by our resource persons. And after the presentations, uh, everyone will be invited to speak and share your own experiences about working, um, about your work. Um, and hopefully it will be an opportunity also to learn from each other about um, successful practices, good best practices. Um, but before we, we, we do that, I would first like to introduce um, Rappler's managing editor. Uh, she is Glenda Gloria. She will welcome everyone and explain the importance of this event. Please give a round of applause to Glenda Gloria. Chai. Good morning. Good morning, Secretary Suleiman, uh, Praveen. Um, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Rappler uh, to this forum, which uh, we intend to feature also the best practices of NGOs in ending hunger and malnutrition in this country. Um, admittedly, hunger is not a topic as sexy as overpriced buildings or cakes, but uh, it's a problem that deserves attention not just from decision makers, but also we acknowledge from the Twittering and Facebooking crowd. We believe that the campaign for zero hunger should be everyone's responsibility, especially because hunger's most vulnerable victims are children who will one day rule this country and the world. This is why we at Rappler are very grateful for the partnership we have forged with the DSWD and the WFP, um, which resulted actually in the setting up of a microsite for hunger about nine months ago on Rappler. The microsite seeks to popularize the otherwise complex data and issues relevant to understanding the problem. The stories, infographics, and video that we have con uh, produced have sparked comments and conversations from social media that show us how Filipinos have very different levels of appreciation and understanding of the problem. I, I recall one Rappler documentary produced by Patricia Evangelista, who is now our multimedia manager, which she titled Tatlong Araw. Tatlong Araw because it talks about a family that goes on without food for three days. Reacting to the docu, some readers said the family is to blame for their own situation, calling their parents tamad or lazy. One commenter wrote, and I quote, mga batugan lang ang nananatiling mahirap. The other sober voices in that thread, however, joined the conversation to say that the problem of hunger is not as simple as laziness or joblessness. And one commenter said, and I quote, there is no use blaming and criticizing these poor people. We must put our energy and mind to helping others. Thanks, Rappler, for sharing the documentary. Social media, where Rappler, and I suppose most of you here in this room live, can be very harsh. But it can also be a source of sensible commentary and inspiring posts that move people to action. That is what we strive so hard to harness in the online world, where we hope to write stories that trigger meaningful conversation and in the process expand a platform for informed action. All of us in this room believe, I guess, that hunger can be solved, that it can be stopped, but we also know that this can only be done through collaboration without which this forum or the project itself would not be possible. So again, on behalf of Rappler and the DSWD and WFP, we welcome our guests to this forum, which we have aptly titled, Aiming for Zero Hunger. You may join us also online. We're being live streamed now on rappler.com. And if you have questions, you can post them or comments on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you very much at magandang umaga po. 
Thank you, Glenda. So uh, as Glenda mentioned, we are, uh, we are being live streamed and you can participate. There's Wi-Fi in the room. Um, just uh, if you want to tweet your questions and your comments, use the hashtag, uh, hashtag zero hunger. And then um, tag um, move at move.ph if you have specific questions. Um, and once that gets going, your, your questions will, will show up on the, on the wall later on, so long as you use the hashtag at zero hunger. Okay, I'd like now to, let's begin now with the, with the introductions and, and the discussions. I'd like to introduce our, our first speaker. Hold on. <laughs> yes. Um, our first speaker is, of course, uh, Secretary Dinky Soliman. You've, you've seen her very active, um, especially post Yolanda and uh, in the after, even, even after, immediately after, after Yolanda. Um, she heads, of course, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, but prior to working, to joining government, she had years of experience working with NGOs. So uh, many years ago, she was where many of you are uh, right now. And um, if, if you don't know or you didn't know, she was also the Executive Vice President of Community Organizers Multidiversity, among many, many others. So um, I'll cut it short. Uh, let's all give a warm welcome to Secretary Soliman. Thank you, Chai. I, I really just thought a name would do because many of you, I think, know me. Uh, some of you here, I've crossed paths in my former life. Uh, some of you have, uh, are actively engaged with us uh, in the work that we're doing in poverty reduction. And some of you have read about me, good or bad. <laughs> so, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Maayong buntag. Assalamualaikum. Uh, uh, I'd like to begin by uh, starting off with just a reminder. Uh, when we speak of hunger, this is really prevalent or uh, aside from existing hunger situations due to poverty, when a disaster strikes, it increases and it intensifies. So just to uh, remind us, can I just use this? Um, casualty count and uh, where we are uh, we really had, last year, at this time, I was in Tacloban working Leyte and Samar. There were 1.4 million affected families and uh, 918 displaced and 1,171 damaged houses, 6,300 fatalities and 28,000 injured and 1,000 missing. This just gives us a backdrop of what we had to deal with and will continue to work with now. And the main and the first work that we believe should be done was ensuring that food would get to everyone as soon as we can. Uh, all the preposition goods were got wet in basically the region hub, which is Tacloban. But all other towns that preposition their goods in safer places, had food for two to three days. An example of that is Giwan. They placed it in a safer place. That's why when we saw them November 11, the mayor was saying, you really came at the right time because my last food pack is running out today and we're going to be needing support. And so we sent two C-130s immediately after we came back. The same is true for all other areas, but even more so, in the Panay Island. Because late this summer, the first responders were victims themselves. Most of the preposition goods were wet. And uh, we needed to bring it in as soon as we can. And I will admit that we were logistically challenged for it. Therefore, what did we do? We, from uh, November to July, 
uh, we did 4.6 million at three to six kilos. But as early as December, we already were giving 20 kilos of 25 kilos of rice and 20 pieces of uh, canned goods so that it will take them two weeks to be able to consume that. And that means our delivery mechanism will have more space because the three to six kilos meant that we were delivering every two days. And uh, th th that really is a big logistical challenge. So overall, we were able to provide uh, 12 million roughly food packs. This includes the food packs that were given by World Food Program, basically rice. What I'd like to point out, this does not count what all the foundations, media foundations, NGOs such as you, international NGOs that have been giving out also on their own, private sector groups also giving out on their own. That This count, the 12 million plus, does not include that. And even what the church has given out. <coughs> so th this is the first thing that I think is important to keep in mind that what we needed to do was to make sure that there is food for everyone. And I know that there had been um, issues about food not reaching people at all. And as I always say, I'd like to know where that is. Because we have uh, been monitoring and we do have a um, tweet and a cell phone number that people can call. And we did use it and we did get it. Uh, and many people at the first two weeks were saying, you have not reached this village. I'm a relative of this village that's there. And that really helped that people were texting exactly where they were. The next set of texts in December were, we have received, but the second and third, or the third and the fourth. And then in the first quarter of uh, 2014, the text that we were getting in the complaint is, when will the shelter kits come? So th the, the I, I'm explaining this because when we speak of food security, it's not only food but it is also important to think through about shelter. But in the meantime, even as we were trying to cope with the demand for shelter, and uh, the basic response was tents and uh, transitional shelters, we also were very conscious, and when I say we, the national government and the local government, that food packs is not the only way that we can help people get up and recover and we wanted to recover as quickly. And those of you who are familiar with Chuchi Foundation, uh, on the second week, we're already giving out cash for work. Because we believe that together with the food packs, cash for work brings in more security for food and are able to support whatever is not provided for in the food packs. So for cash for work, the numbers are there. We have served 381,830 of all the areas. And I have to keep reminding all of us that it is Coron, it is Panay, it is Northern Cebu, and Leyte Samar. That's 171 municipalities. So uh, all of that uh, numbers were served under the cash for work and emergency employment. And again, this is national government funds. This does not count the um, funds that were brought in by the different NGOs that were working in the area under a cash for work system and the international UN agencies that were also doing their own cash for work. Just to give you a sense, the government was providing cash for work at minimum wage of the area. Chuchi came in for, I think, 18 days, if I'm not mistaken, at 500 pesos per day. Uh, the minimum wage was 280, I think. So even government workers who were already reporting to work in the municipal hall understandably took a leave and joined the cash for work of Chuchi. Because Chuchi will give it out at the end of the day. Now, why is this? Because as we did uh, for the unconditional cash transfers, this is too precisely, and Chuchi uh, believed in this, we believed in this, ILO believed in this, the WFP believed in this, that in addition to the food pack, 
which gives them the food, providing the cash, allows the economy to be uh, reinvigorated. And somehow, I will uh, attest to the fact that once the cash flow work was given out, all other goods that were taken from the department stores in the first three days came out in the side streets and were being sold. And so that means the economy, even before the big stores opened, all the informal ways of providing cash for uh, the people there were already restarted because of the cash flow work. But the most vulnerable, we thought, may not be even able to participate in cash flow work because of uh, inability or lack of support family-wise because they were still dealing with grief or they were probably uh, missing one or two so they need to stay at home. So we also provided unconditional cash grants. And the unconditional cash grants meant it's the Pantawid Pamilya Network. So we provided what we would have provided without looking at the condition. And the WFP and World Food Program topped up. So in addition to what we were giving, they also gave. Uh, the World Food Program provided 1,300 pesos on top of what we would give. And uh, UNICEF gave 4,400 pesos on top of what we would give. And we worked with them so that the most vulnerable were the ones who were provided. And so for uh, UNICEF, it was to provide to 100, to 5,801. And for World Food Program, it is 101,000 plus. And this was again given across the area. So what you see in the, in the slide is the total number of household, 421,000, and 4.7 billion uh, having been given out unconditionally to uh, the families uh, of 421,585. What really worked at this point is these are the families who were already being served by Pantawid. So we knew the name, we knew the address, we knew where they were. We had a, we had a structure and a system. The parent leaders knew who they were, the parent leaders knew if they were missing, the parent leaders knew if they moved. And so, and the municipal links that we were working with also had that system. Those that had ATM that was working, we worked through the ATM and the others were through uh, the conduits that were part of the Pantawid system. So this is what we have learned that a social protection system before or even uh, that, that is in place really helps in a disaster response. It's not perfect yet, we need to do more, but we need to work on uh, many things. Now I'll, I'll be very quick. Uh, the shelter, I'll just go through it very quickly. I just want to make sure that you underst we understand that the shelter is part of food security because if you give out in evacuation centers and tents, you threaten whatever they have with uh, spoilage, with, uh, because it's going to get wet. So what we needed to do was move them to more secure uh, abode. And that's the transitional shelter. And the transitional shelter can either be a bunkhouse or a uh, single detached. Uh, another thing that we thought was very important was reconstruction of the civil documents because we cannot, and it would be hard to provide for uh, support uh, to, be, to give um, government services and even NGOs because the international NGOs and international organizations have to also account. And if they don't have any document that can be used as an accounting, it really will be hard. Especially when you're moving to early recovery, not anymore a humanitarian relief stage. So this was important that we were able to work with uh, the United Nations hum uh, High Commission on UNHCR. <laughs> and <coughs> they worked with an NGO called IDEALS which is a paralegal group, and now it's also being supported by UNICEF. So we have been able to reconstruct 119,530 families with documents, birth certificates, um, land registration, civil uh, marriages, which are all important in claiming many of the benefits that are being given to them. Very quickly, in education, what you see is uh, the number of support that has been provided by Department of Education. Again, it does not count all of the NGOs that had provided. 
and livelihood assistance, which began in January of 2014, uh, this has also been given out and it continues to be a priority. This is just the livelihood assistance of DSWD. It does not count DTI, Department of Agriculture, and DOLE. The next one is that we still continue to work with community-driven development programs, which we had existing before. And from November 2013 to September, 145 sub-projects were completed. These are daycares, these are classrooms, these are repair of health units, and the reason why it's fast is because it was done by the people. The money went direct to uh, the people community account. Now, where are we after we've done all of that? We're not completely recovered, but I think these are just some images for you to see. Uh, this is in Giwan. This is the transitional shelter uh, for the 100 30 families who were living in what media was calling a tent city. They are now all in this place in Kogon. In Tanawan Leyte, uh, this is the memorial. The plaza was done as a mass grave and now they have a nice garden and the names are all inscribed in a wall and this was done by INJAP, a private sector partnership that did the plaza so that it's really, um, it, it is a gracious way of commemorating. Instead of remembering this is a mass grave, it is remembered as a commemoration of people, who, our loved ones who died, and all their names are in that wall. Now, in Tacloban Leyte, uh, what we have is at least 120 houses were raffled off on November 8th. Uh, as you see in the picture, the secretary, Ping Lak Son, Babe Sing Son, GM Chito Cruz and myself, together with the city administrator of Tacloban City and the head of the shelter cluster, uh, Maria Lagman. And uh, we were expecting the mayor because he confirmed and told us to be there. And he was supposed to cut the uh, ribbon, but unfortunately, he did not make it. This is uh, 200 houses ready for occupancy before the year end. And by March 2015, there will be 2,000 of that. This is Ridge View, and uh, it's a very nice place. It's high in, the, in Tacloban. It's north of Tacloban, and these are permanent shelters. The next one is Ormok, very quickly. Uh, this is the Chuchi Foundation. It's called Great Love, and uh, what they have is uh, transition shelters that will eventually be permanent. Now, very quickly, having shown all of that, we obviously know that hunger was the threat and we tried to address that very quickly through food security and everything that you need to ensure that the security of the food that they have, whatever they were able to get, is uh, taken care of. But we know that hunger is not just in these areas. So hunger among children below five to five years old is the data that we have there. This is from the Food and Nutrition Research Institute that does uh, a that, what, that the last one that they did was in 2013, a national nutrition survey. <coughs> and that taste tells you where we are. Wasted means uh, thin for their age. And stunted means short for their age. <coughs> Hunger among children five to 10 years old is the next one. And again, it speaks uh, for itself. This is FNRI. And uh, based on the last social weather station survey of per self perception, 4.8 million families said they experienced involuntary hunger at least once in the past three months. So, what are we doing about it? Uh, I have been given a minute. Can I get another minute just so? So, government initiatives are basically. Uh, supplementary feeding, which uh, really is uh, done through the daycare centers. Good morning, Senator Grace. Uh, and uh, this uh, supplementary feeding is done through the daycare centers in uh, local government units in the barangays. And for 2013-2014, we were working with uh, 1,692 children 
in daycare, which is about 53,495 daycares covering uh, different, covering 1,630 LGUs. Now, this is very important because I think what we do here is uh, really work on the mothers, and the mothers are the ones who are providing uh, the cook food one to five, Monday to Friday, and what we do with that is that it's given just before they leave uh, for school, uh, to go home after school, uh, either at lunchtime or just before uh, going home in the afternoon. Now, complementing this is what we have recently piloted and now we are going to launch in three areas, the Partnership Against Hunger and Poverty, which is a result of <coughs> one of the exposure programs that we, were, we went through, the World Food Program. Uh, we were invited by the Center for Excellence Against Hunger in Brazil. And uh, we are working with Dar, uh, Mr. Herman is here. He's uh, with the Department of Agrarian Reform. The basic idea is the agrarian reform beneficiaries are planting rice and other vegetables. We have funds. For 2014, it's 4 billion pesos so far for daycare. We will buy directly from the Arbos the needs of the daycare so that we benefit from their uh, goods and the farmers benefit from our daycare centers because we buy their goods. So that, that means we're addressing the issue of food security two ways. Making sure the children get the food and making sure the family of the farmers are able to earn enough so that they can have food security in their own homes. Uh, we can talk more about that later and that's being done in Camarines Sur, in uh, Region 8, and in Region Five, uh, no, what's the other? Nine, nine in Sambuanga. Uh, another initiative is uh, the Pantawid Familia, which is basically the cash grants that we provide. And uh, the studies that we have done, set to impact evaluation, already indicate that 30% of what they get actually goes to food. Uh, they buy rice uh, to, with it. Uh, this is just the result of the impact evaluation. I think I'll skip that. Uh, the main thing that I'd like to say, uh, I'm ending now, is that hunger uh, is not just food on the table. From our point of view, hunger can be addressed by having a secure place, a home, education, and health centers that will collaborate together to ensure that hunger is addressed, it, because hunger is not just the absence of food. Hunger is also the insecurity of where you get your next food. And therefore, you need to work on ensuring that all of that is addressed. And that's where many of the things that we have discussed here are actually short term, uh, which means yung munang kailangan, yung mga nagugutom, yung mga nakikita nyo nagpapagpag. Yan yung aming ina-address sa pantawid. That's why we have a modified conditional cash transfer. But the medium term is something like what we're doing with the uh, Department of Agrarian Reform. In the final analysis, it's really to reduce the vulnerability by ensuring that poverty is a thing of the past. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much, Secretary. Um, I proceed now to our next speaker, um, Mr. Praveen 